Publisher did, and uh, but of course you're well known, all the Bruce Lee fans know you. Oh really? Yeah, Bay Logan. Oh, we have Bay on, yeah. Oh, oh that's cool. They're like, oh you're doing a book, you gotta talk to them. Oh, oh that's I wicked. I heard from a bunch of different people. Oh nice one man. Um, we had, we had Bay on, we had um, Michael Work, who does the Clones class, which is a podcast about Bruce Lee impersonators. I love that show so much, man. Uh, you know, because there's that whole thing. We'll talk about this on that. We'll talk about this on that. Right. I think they're kind of red. Man, uh, how many shows have we um, started with the um, the theme tune to the obscure "Goodbye Bruce Lee" um, by Candy? What a great piece of music that is! Why the hell are we getting that one out again? I'll tell you why. Because there's a well newish. It's been out about a month, maybe five six weeks. Bruce Lee um, book. Bruce Lee. A Life. It's by Matthew Polly. I've got that right, haven't I? You've got exactly right. And Matthew joins me in the studio all the way from... The, you've been... You you live in... You've been to America. You live in America. <laughs> I do. Whereabouts in America are you from, man? Uh, I live in New Haven, Connecticut. Okay. I just flew in here last week for a, a Bruce Lee conference in Cardiff now, this University. Is, this, is, this, was, this was in the week. Because I looked at this and was thinking, oh, if, if this is a weekend, I'm going. But it was in the week. Yes, it was. What Now, tell me what happens at Bruce Lee conference because 15 year old me is fanboying out massively on this well you know i thought it would be a little star trekky but actually there's a number of scholars from hong kong university from oxford uh, film scholars yeah. and uh, martial arts scholars who came to do papers about bruce lee and his influence on the martial arts and culture in general and it's i thought it was awesome because one of the things that uh, i found researching the book yeah. is that he has a huge fan base um but he's not really as Respected in the academy as I think he deserves to be for his impact. It, well, it, I, I get. It. Here's the thing. I, I, I can never, he made like four and a half films. You Basically, know, this, this yeah. is the thing. And the fact that we're talking about him, forty five years or thereabouts after he died, with a handful of films, right. the majority of them low budget foreign films. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and and those Hong Kong movies, <laughs> they, <laughs> they were rough. They are rough, but there's there's just something about them. You know, this guy, by rights, should have been written off in history. You know, he did, he did the, the, the foreign films, the kind of Enter the Dragon, which is a little bit schlocky, really. Mm. But there's something about him. What, what do you think it is that, that, that we've asked this question a lot on this show, that 45 years later, th this guy is still, you know, revered and talked about? I think part of the impact is that Bruce Lee convinced people like you, people like me, we fell in love with him. Yeah. And there's something about his presence on screen that's just pure energy yeah. and captivates people. And so I ended up taking the martial arts, 20 million different... I did it. Yeah. I learned, I learned Kung Fu as a result of Bruce. Exactly. Yeah. And so he was almost a missionary. He yeah. came over and he converted a good portion of the Western world to Kung Fu and introduced it. And it, it had been there before, but Bruce Lee is the face that mm. popularizes it. And you're right, he does have that chemistry. In his first, I mean, it made films as a kid, obviously, but in his first kind of big, big martial arts film, The Big Boss, he doesn't do anything for the first 45 minutes. He does nothing. He just stands there very passively. But, you know, and, and James Tien is kind of the star of the first half, but, but all eyes are on Bruce. Right. It's just got that magic, hasn't he? That's what was amazing. In fact, uh, the big boss, he wasn't supposed to be the star. James Tien yeah. had already been booked. Wow. And uh, they shoved Bruce in, and they were trying to decide if Bruce really had the deal, if he was the real deal or not. Yeah. And so, you know, quite quickly they realized that, you know, He's got the whatever that X factor yeah. is that makes someone a star. Bruce had it, and they killed off James Tien, and the, and from there it was history. Bruce Lee dominated the industry. Well, why did you write a book about him? I well, the main reason was a he was a childhood hero of mine, uh, but b a friend of mine said, you know, you love Bruce, you should write a biography, of Bruce. And I said, well, there has to be several good ones out there, right. and and there isn't. Mm -mm. And I felt almost personally insulted that. 
you know, Steve McQueen has six good biographies about him. Marilyn Monroe has like a dozen. Mm. But uh, any white person does anything gets a biography, but Bruce Lee can't get one. And so I really felt like this was my way to pay back my debt to Bruce Lee, to write a proper mm. biography of his life. Now, you mentioned the, the, the white actors. We'll talk about Steve McQueen in a minute. But, but, but what a lot of people don't appreciate is... Um, the barriers that he broke, that Bruce Lee broke down um, in in America, because of course they wanted him to play, when he was trying to be an actor, they wanted him to be the diddle little and den den, all the chop socky, you yeah. know, with the ponytails, the the kind of the yellow mat, all of that kind of stuff. And he was like, Nah, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not playing those right. slightly racist traditional Chinese characters. Yeah, he called them hop along Wong rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great line. And he, you know, he and he would say, "I'm not going to play some pigtail coolie on some wow. western show or a houseboy." Uh, and in fact, the first role he was offered was Charlie Chan's number one son. This yeah. is little known, and he was going to be the star. And the executive said, "No one will watch a TV show in America in 1966 with a Chinese actor as the star." Yeah, and so he got bumped down to Cato. Uh, in the Green Hornet, and he was furious, and he said to the producer, "I'm not doing this if you make me some houseboy role." Yeah, and they and the producer's like, "We're going to make you the weapon. You're going to yeah. be as important as the Green Hornet." And that's how he became a star initially. And then when that show got canceled, he had four to five years where he couldn't book anything. Mm. You know, he was one show a year, um, and. There, he did one Western, which is funny because none of the other Westerns would let him have a short haircut. <laughs> and his, his hairstylist was Jay Sebring, who was, mm. uh, who was killed in the Manson murders. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And Sebring was the one wow. who introduced him to Coburn and uh, McQueen. He was his connection into that celebrity culture. Um, so he has this really mod stylish yeah. haircut in this Western TV show, but basically he couldn't get booked. And it, and almost out of frustration, uh, he ended up going back to Hong Kong, and that's how his career. Well, this is, and this is, and by the way, the, the Green Hornet. It's not aged brilliantly. No, but Bruce Lee is so cool in that. That's he right. is, and there's a lot of him hanging back and then just exploding into to bat. And if you want a, a real treat, uh, 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 the episode of Batman that's got uh, <laughs> the crossover. Bruce, yeah, oh, it's so good. Where, where I think Robin beats Bruce Lee up, doesn't he? And so the story behind this is the first script. Uh, they're visiting Batman, and Batman's the bigger show. Yeah. and they write it so that Cato loses to Robin, <laughs> and Bruce throws a fit. He's like, "I'm not doing it. No one would believe I would wow. lose to this guy." Uh, and so the producers come down and they have a discussion and they basically have have a Mexican standoff as the end. And neither one wins. But Bruce was very sort of aggressive about not letting a Chinese character be treated as yeah. subservient. Um, we talked about the, the barriers he broke down going to America, but then when he went back to Hong Kong, mm. didn't a lot of kind of Chinese think he was he was too American, he was too Western for them? And that's what's sort of amazing about Bruce's career. In many ways, he's almost a post-racial figure because yeah. he grew up, he was Eurasian. Um, his ancestry was, his grandmother was all English. This is the stuff you found out exclusively in this book. No one knew this No before. one knew this before. Everyone thought his uh, grandfather was German, and a uh, German Catholic priest was one of the stories. <laughs> Turns out his grandmother's English, his great-grandfather was Dutch-Jewish, and so he, from a very early age, had discrimination for not being Chinese enough in mm -hmm. Hong Kong. Then he gets discriminated in America for not being white, then he goes back to Hong Kong and they say he's too westernized. Mm. In fact, there was a huge scandal that occurred because he grew out a full beard. And most Chinese men can't grow out of full right, beard. Yeah, yeah. And so when he did that, uh, they criticized him for not respecting elders and tradition. Wow. And so he faced a lot of sort of, uh, of criticism. And I think that's why once he was asked, do you think of yourself as Chinese or North American? And he said, I like to think of myself as human because under heaven we're all from the same family. <laughs> What a, what a message. And that, that, and that, you know, we were saying something very similar on this show the other day, you know, with, with, with Brexit and the World Cup and all of this stuff that I couldn't really care less about. I, we, human beings, man, you know, yeah. once we realise that. What was his connection with the Kung Fu television series? With the, 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 we went to David Carradine. Was he supposed to be doing that? So I, I researched the whole thing. Uh, one of the myths is that he wrote it. He didn't actually write no. the script. He had a different project called The Warrior, which uh, apparently is going to be on Cinemax American TV next year, Wowzers. based okay. on his original treatment. Um, wow. But he went in to audition for the part, and I talked to the TV executive at Warner Brothers who auditioned him, and he said, oh, <laughs> this guy Tom Coon and Bruce Lee 
kicks open the door, comes in with his nunchaku, and starts whirling it around <laughs> the guy's face. And 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 Tom Coon is like, slow down, slow down. Wow. Like, so Bruce slows down and is talking to him. And uh, Coon's impression was he had great energy. He was really passionate, tremendous charisma. But he felt his accent was too thick. Right, okay. Which is a weird thing to say because when I hear Bruce speak, yeah. I don't hear, I hear a slight accent, but nothing too thick. Yeah. And I think what it was, though, is that deep in their subconscious, they knew they didn't want to cast a Chinese guy in the part. Right, okay. And, and so they, they did George Takai. They went through all the actors and Asian actors in Hollywood and they went, nope, 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 nope. And then they got to the white actors and they said, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, America. I mean, well, saying that, saying America wasn't ready for a Chinese lead then, I can't think of that many series. From recent time where you've had a Chinese lead. There's that, like a couple, possibly. Yeah, just very recently. Uh, Fresh Off the Boat uh, is one of the first right. comedies to have it. And then Filthy Rich Asians is this new movie that's going to come out, which will be, you know, most of the parts will be Chinese. Uh, Kung Fu was a breakthrough. And then after that, um, because there were a lot of Chinese parts underneath David Carradine. Uh, but they were all with the pointy hats yes. and the, the, the bowing and, and getting beaten up by the cowboys and then David Carradine comes and, and does saves his them. Yeah, The yeah. white guy saves of the Chinese he guys. Of exactly. course he does. And, and I think part of the reason why your very first question, why Bruce Lee still stays with us is because not only is he the first to star in a Hollywood movie, but he's almost pretty much the only one. I mean, we only have Jackie Chan. Yeah. And 45 years later... You can't think of another romantic, heroic no. lead as an Asian actor. And you mentioned Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan's accent I struggle with in a lot of movies. Some movies it's clearer than others. But a lot of movies I struggle with, with his accent when he's speaking English. That's right. And and uh, one of the great advantages Bruce had is he grew up uh, wealthy. And so he went to schools where English was the language being taught. Right. And, of course, Jackie Chan grew up in the Peking opera tradition where he didn't go to school at all. Yeah. Uh, and so... So uh, I don't think Jackie would succeed at all, except for the fact that he's a physical comedian. Yeah, and he he plays the Buster Clean clown. The lang- that's the language, and that's so the language is all physical, and the words are very minor. But that's why Bruce works. Okay, we got Matthew Polly here's book Bruce Lee: A Life Is Out. I've tweeted links to it. I'll tweet them again in a little bit. This is the late night alternative on Talk Radio. Talk Radio, digital debate me. for the UK. Okay, good. Oh, man, I'm, 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 I'm remembering all this stuff from uh, the deep dark research. This is great. This is great. What fun. At Selco Builders well, Warehouse, we've got real builds on a wide range of trade quality building products. In July, we've got a pads load IM65 nailer kit for just £439.99 extra, plus £70 worth of free pads, plus an extra battery and cleaner. Now that's a real deal. We've got even more real deals at Selco Builders Warehouse. Because mm. oh, you've read a lot of Bruce Lee books, they're mostly the books are terrible. Dad. They're terrible and they're done by Michael Everyone Lynch hates it when their boyfriend yeah. yeah. slows down. I mean, there's but with the ultimate it's, speed it's guarantee, that only that from Vodafone, you get super you know, fast broadband speeds or money off until it's fixed. And our pay monthly customers can get super fast fiber home broadband for only twenty-one pounds a month. The future is exciting. Ready? They all have these biographies. I wanted Bruce to be on the same shelf. Well, you've done it. What's next? What's next? I don't know. Bruce Lee's Life is Out. 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 Bruce Lee's Life is Out.
I mean, her story is incredible. That whole yeah. sort of rediscovery two or three years ago. By the way, there's a legend in this weird thing that's a mile from anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, uh, I just met her recently. Right, and the she's welcome. absolutely fabulous. The keeps really. On giving. And does she, does, she, does she get that people still love her? Is she, does, 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 does she so far removed from that part of her history? Uh, the late night alternative with Ian Lee on Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. Um, I'm joined by Matthew Polly. He's an author. He's written a book called Bruce Lee: A Life. He's written other books. Tapped out. We might talk about that in a minute. I was just telling Matthew that when I went to New York. Um, as you would have heard, dear listener, I, I went to, um, the, when the Monkeys concerts were cancelled, I went to this restaurant, this Chinese restaurant owned by Angela Mao, who is, you know, was uh, a, a rarity, a female kung fu star who was excellent as well. You know, it wasn't just a token woman. She was incredible. She did films with Bruce and with Jackie Chan and all of these people. Then she vanished off the face of the earth in a cup, but two or three years ago, story came out saying hey you remember that woman who was in those films um she's got a restaurant just outside of new york city and it's and i went and saw her. you went and interviewed her recently didn't i you? did i talked to angela mao ying and she's she's as charming as you could ever hope wow and uh some uh friends of mine brought a poster and she took photos with them and she kind of has this you know it's like uh someone who was so famous when she was in her 20s and has mm. left it behind, and mm. you're sort of reminding her a part of her youth, and so there's a kind of joy, but also a slight embarrassment. She's she's absolutely delightful, and you can see, when you meet certain people, you're like, I see why you were a star. You're right, she's still got that vibe. She's got that She's got that oh, little bit extra that you know that I'm she was so somebody pleased, special. I'm so pleased, because when I went, she wasn't, I just went on a whim, and it took me a couple of hours to fight. It, it is, right yeah. out of the way. Yeah. Um, and I got on, a tr I tried to do the subway, and I couldn't do it, then I got on Uber, and we got there. And she wasn't there, and I didn't expect her to be. Every time, every, every time a tiny Chinese woman with glasses came in, <laughs> I kind of went to stand up. And in that part of town, that happens quite a lot. Yeah. There's a big Chinese community. It is, yeah. But I didn't speak to her. I had a lovely lunch, and I spoke to her son, George, and right. I just said, look, man, I'm, I'm from the UK, and I just want you to know that I think your mum is fab, and she was really important to me when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. and, and he was over the moon. I mean, that must be weird for him as well he, he was saying that fans he, he was saying fans from all over america and when i said the uk he was like what you've come from there for this <laughs> and i said yeah man it was great food as well it was. it's a it's a great chinese restaurant uh what happened is her son uh, immigrated over here and opened a restaurant and right. was having some trouble and she came over to help oh, him out good for her so you've got that chinese family thing that uh, goes on did you get to speak to any of bruce lee's family because we've tried to get shannon uh, uh, his daughter on the show and linda on the show because they do a podcast they do and the management said, yeah, we shall write down, send us an email, tell us what the show is, what you want, and we'll pass it on to them. Never heard from them ever again. They obviously <laughs> were not interested. Did you get access to them? I did. I interviewed Shannon and Linda. Wow. And I talked to his older sister, Phoebe. Mm. Uh, and I briefly chatted with Robert, although I didn't interview him. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I got to have uh, chats with all of them. And were they... <sighs> What do they, th it, it must be difficult for the widow of someone who died 45 years ago and the daughter to keep going back, keep going back and, and talk, you know, how, what's their relationship with their history? Well, I think it's interesting because Shanna now runs the Bruce Lee estate. Right, yeah. And so, uh, this is her job to go around and talk right. about her father. Um, uh, Linda's mostly retired, and so it took a while to arrange the interview. Uh, what struck me about uh, Linda is the degree, the amount of love she still has for him. Mm. Uh, and it made me think, he must have been a pretty good husband, <laughs> because uh, I think 45 years later, my wife would be, have moved on. So <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, so she really, she really, she, she can quote things that he said mm. from the past, and, uh, she just, she really thinks he's amazing. And it was important for me to get that kind of feel of, you can get a feel of who someone was through the people who love them. Mm. And uh, I got a real sense of sort of, he was very devoted to her. Uh, and, and he was serious about making her happy. And he did. She was, she loved him. Mm. Despite the fact, we know that, that, that he died um, at a, a house of a mystery, his mistress, Betty yep. Ting Pei, Chinese right. actor. Um, but in your book, you, you've found out that there were other 
affairs going on, which isn't actually that surprising, is it, when you, you kind of know a little bit about him? That's right. I mean, he grew up in Hong Kong, where his grandfather had 13 concubines. Mm. It was just sort of accepted that uh, a, a man who's successful has more than one relationship. And then, of course, he goes to Hong Kong in the swinging 60s. Mm. Steve McQueen's his mentor. Um, but no one had really covered any of that. And so... Uh, one of the interesting stories was uh, the actress Sharon Farrell, who was in the movie uh, Marlowe. Okay, the, yes. Bruce's very first uh, debut, where he has like... Is that the one where he jumps off the roof? It's yes. Exactly. Yeah. Three, he's got like three minutes of screen time with James scene. Garner. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, and so uh, they met on set, and they, they a thing got started. And then her next movie was with Steve McQueen in The Reavers, and this thing started with Steve. And so for a, a while, the two of them were competing over the wow. same the same woman, and she ended up picking Steve. And and Bruce said, "I know he's such a big star, but someday I'll be a big star too. Won't you wait for me?" <laughs> and you get a sense of it was like high school, wow, right? You yeah. know, two guys who are who both have a crush on the cheerleader. And I think Bruce's view uh, very much was. You know, a, a, it's very kind of 1950s Mad Men view. Like, mm. you're a dedicated husband, you earn, you love your wife, but when you're off at work... A man has needs, and, you know, you've got to go and get them where you can. That I think that was very much the view of that time. Yeah. And he... he and so it was very typical, and when I discovered I was like, of course. Yeah. You know, I wasn't shocked or anything. But it's interesting that I think a lot of... Um, People he had these relationships with were afraid that Bruce Lee fans would be upset, mm. and so they didn't say anything for a long time. He was um, very hip and, and very um, exotic when he moved to the States. And you mentioned Steve McQueen and James Coburn, because he set up a martial arts school. Again, uh, the, the Chinese furious that he was, he was sharing this stuff with Westerners, you know, this great Chinese secret. Uh, how did he manage, to, how did he get in with Steve McQueen and Coburn? Because they were big stars then. They were huge stars, and that's one of the amazing things about Bruce, is he had so much, like, interpersonal charisma that mm. he could go and charm the biggest box office stars on Earth and have them want to learn from him. Uh, his his access was through Jay Sebring. Right, the hairdresser. Who died in the Manson murders. Uh, and Sebring, they were all his clients, and he started to teach Sebring. Sebring started to brag about him to his clients, and one by one, he picked them up. And so so during this period where he couldn't get any parts, the way he kept the rent going was by teaching uh, uh, Coburn for like $150 an hour wow. in 1967. So it was like $800 an hour it wow. was to, to train with Bruce. And he tried, uh, he, he used those relationships to try to advance his career. Yeah. Did you speak to Coburn? Coburn had passed. Oh, when did he, when did he, hang on a minute, James Coburn's dead? <laughs> what, what the hell? When did James Coburn die? I think it was a bit a while ago. No! Yes, I You're think joking! So. I know. I'm, oh, I, Matthew! I, I could be wrong. Someone can call in and tell me I'm God, wrong. Someone, can we, can, Catherine, can we, we find Google out? We gotta Google that one. I'm first of all, is James Coburn dead or was he just ignoring Matthew's calls? Oh, that could be. He's dead to me. And if, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if he ignored your calls, he's dead to me. And when he died, because this is, this is a huge, I was only thinking about him the other day, thinking, you don't hear much from James Coburn these days. You may have cleared up that mystery. That yes. could be, Kath's about to type up, well, hang on a minute, he's definitely dead. If what What year did he die, Catherine? No! 2002? No one told me? <laughs> we you, got, were, you weren't at the funeral. You dude, didn't get invited. <laughs> we've got to end this show. I, can't, I know. I can't it's, it's a lone note. Funny you mentioned the, 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 the funeral, because... Um, we we talked about the the Bruce Lee clones on this show. Yes, uh, 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 the, uh, and there's a brilliant podcast, the Clones Cast, which is a great listen. And and how, I I in the wake of Bruce Lee's death, Hong Kong went. Hang on a minute, we're losing loads of money. Oh, let's just get people who look a little bit like them, call them Bruce something, and put them in the film. And there were there were literally hundreds of these, and Bruce Lai and Bruce Lur and Dragon Lee and all yeah. these people. Yeah. They, they tried it with Jackie Chan for a while. They, they tried did. to make him Bruce Lee for a yeah. while. Um, and in so many of those films, even in the Game of Death, there's I'm always I was always surprised as a kid. There's actual footage of Bruce Lee's funeral mm. and Bruce Lee's corpse in his open top coffin. How the hell? How is, how, how does that pop up in so many films? And boy oh boy, that's dark. Putting it in the Game of Death, a film about him that he died making. Yeah. How did they get the clearance for that? 
So uh, I one of the people I interviewed for the book was Raymond Chow, who, who is wow. who is his boss. Yeah, one of the last interviews he ever did, and uh, he knew. I think he knew inherently that he was in trouble when Bruce died. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the yeah. golden goose was gone, yeah. and so he was going to milk that for all he had. And yeah. so they sent a camera crew to the funeral, and also the funeral in Seattle. And there's there's photo there's video of Linda on the plane flying from Hong Kong to Seattle with the with the coffin in Jeez. the cargo hold. And he put uh, because he had this footage of the funeral. They just stuck it into Game of Death. And, you know, everybody who loves Bruce Lee, that moment, and when you see that, is like, just makes you cringe. Um, but, you know, Hong Kong, like, people say Hollywood's harsh. Hong Kong doesn't mess around. I, if there's a buck to be made, they figure out a way to do I it. I love Game of Death. Yeah. Right? And do it's, you? It's, it's a mess. Right? Yes. As, as an adult, I recognize it's a mess. As, uh -huh. a, as, a, as a 14 year old kid, 13 when I first saw it, yeah. I thought it was brilliant. Now, for those who don't know, he filmed about 45 minutes of footage, didn't really have a plot, then went off to do Enter the Dragon, then died. And, and Raymond Chow went, we've got all of this footage, what are we going to do? And they craft the most ham-fisted, <laughs> clumsy story about Bruce Lee, <laughs> but he's called Billy Lowe. Uh -huh. And the, the, of course, the, the mafia are after him, so he fakes his death, and then he goes on an undercover mission. But it's done before CGI. So... They just use scenes from Bruce Lee films and pretend it's part of the narrative. And it, there's, isn't there one scene where there's, there's like a picture of Bruce Lee stuck on a mirror? Yes. So he, And you see the guy's body. I go on, explain that. Yeah, I mean, they didn't know how to do it back then and they, they made it for a buck fifty. <laughs> and so they, they have a scene where he goes and it's the actor pretending to be Bruce and looks in the camera, looks in a mirror and then it cuts to the mirror and there's just a photograph of Bruce. <laughs> It is it's, the cheesiest thing you've ever it's seen. Amazing. And also as well, this is another thing that's nuts, right? So it's, it's got about 45 minutes, an hour's worth of Bruce Lee footage. They put about eight minutes of that's it in, right. the, in the movie. Yes. They so that moment go, oh, well, here comes Bruce. We're going to see real Bruce. Oh, that was over quick. They don't put it in. No, they had, they had, they had 30 to 40 minutes of footage that he had filmed. And when you get to those five minutes, that movie completely transforms. Oh, comes alive. And what you realize is, there's just something about someone who's a, a genius. Yeah. And it's like Barishnikov. Like, you just watch him or Gene Kelly, like, dancing. You watch Bruce Lee do Kung Fu, and it's not like anybody else. It cannot be imitated. Mm. And that whatever he had that made him that magnetic just transforms the movie. And suddenly you go from this schlocky blueploitation thing, and then it's like, whoa, mm. this is the best thing ever. And that's the thing, man, about it. You know, people go, what are you talking about this boring, you know, karate man for? Because it, it's not, it's, it's, it's dance. It's, it's, it, you, you mentioned Gene Kelly. It's dance. What he is doing at his best, um, and, and there's, there's a couple of fight scenes that are a little bit rugged, but at his best, um, you know, some of the scenes in Enter the Dragon, those, the, 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 the uncut scene with Kareem Abdul Jabbar, you know, the seven foot tall basketball player, some, the, 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 some of the scenes in Fist of Fury, God, I'm salivating. It's dance. It's beautiful right. performance, isn't it? And so the two things I think why he's so interesting still is because one, people, uh, many people don't know, you do, but he was the Hong Kong cha 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 champion. champion, of course. That's right. And so they were, he also was the expert in the jive, the boogie woogie, <laughs> the lindy hop, like whatever fashionable dance was occurring his teenage years, yeah. he, he became an expert at. He came to America. And his girlfriend at the time in college, before Linda, uh, Amy Sambo, said he would study how African Americans danced mm. and walked and incorporate that into his wow. move. And so he has the kind of rapper swagger as yeah. well. But he cut his teeth as a choreographer. Yeah. And I think the, the, the thing he was clearly most advanced at at the time of his death was choreographing these fight scenes so that they had a rhythm and a flow and the pauses so the whole thing is beautiful in and of itself yeah. beyond just the technical skill of yeah. the strikes and the kicks and also when it's a Chinese crew filming it, it's better there's, there's some great scenes in Enter the Dragon but the fight's a little bit clumsily shot when you've got the Chinese camera operator you know, director of photography and the director who know what it's all about it, it, the whole thing just, just comes alive 
couple more quick questions. Now I'm going to send you on your way. Is there any, you know, this is the, the question every Bruce Lee fan wants to know. Is there any other footage out there that we've <laughs> never seen? It, we're all waiting for that great lost fight scene to come up. Is there anything? So, uh, fans got their hopes up in the 90s when Bay Logan, who you've had on, mm. found the full game of death, mm. which was about 60 minutes of material. Uh, and then, of course, the Pierre Burton interview mm. was found by John Little. Uh, and since then, there's been nothing. From what I've heard... It, if it existed, no one knows where right, it's at. Right. Uh, and I certainly asked all around, and no one's hiding it. Let okay. me put it that way. Okay. So it might be in a box somewhere on Hammer Hill Road in Hong Kong, but um, as far as we know, there's nothing nothing out there. Okay, now listen, you don't just sit around and write books and go and interview people. You kind of get dirty and sweaty for your books. And I was reading up about you um, this week, Tapped Out. Yeah. This is where you... Now, what, we're a similar age. We're sort of late 40s? Yep, okay. late 40s, yeah. And, you know, we, we, I, with no disrespect, you, you don't look the fittest guy. <laughs> Not <certainly>. anymore. <laughs> but you went and did mixed martial arts. Sure. Are you nuts? I know. That stuff crazy. is proper dangerous. Yes. Uh, so my very first book I studied at the Shaolin Temple in China. I studied Kung Fu with the monks. Wow. And that was when I was 19 or 20 and okay. I was still fit. Yeah. Uh, and then when I was about 35, I was looking for another book project and they are like, well, you wrote this once. Why don't you try it again and i was like mate <laughs> i got a gut now i'm not going out there yeah. and they're like no no you should it'll be funny a middle-aged guy trying to learn mixed martial it's arts like middle-aged guy getting the shit kicked out so, of it. Be a laugh. so i was at you know extreme couture uh actually randy couture's son ryan was my training mm. partner and just knocked the tar out of me uh and by the time it was over i had a cracked rib and a broken nose like my nose is permanently crooked and uh <laughs> so when they said what book do you want to do next i was like one where i don't get punched in the face <laughs> <laughs> so half the reason i did bruce lee was because you know i could just sit there and read yeah. the books and talk to people but yeah i did i did do the got in the ring and i think it helped to understand sort of where bruce was coming yeah from. That, those, um, what is it? Is it the Long Island tournament? With the thing where he's doing the one inch punch demonstration. Yeah. That, I mean, that, go and find that on YouTube, guys, because, because it's, it's, it's just out of this world, yes. isn't it? The power of that man. Yes, he found a way to sort of tap, a, be able to, like, make his body relax and then drive all his force into a single point mm. at just the right instant, and he could knock men who were eight inches taller and 100 pounds heavier back like eight ten feet it's quite remarkable it's incredible yeah i, I tried to learn how to do it i can't I, do it at all i had a book on, <laughs> i had a book on it when i was 12 like I, james demille yeah yeah. yeah yeah i'm in my bedroom practicing the one inch punch <laughs> <laughs> getting nowhere i was 12 um okay final question then we're gonna let you go uh, uh, matthew uh, um how did he die? <laughs> no. <laughs> was it the vibrating palm? It was there, Dimak. There is, there is this, <laughs> the, the so, death touch. There are so many theories, right, about Bruce Lee dying. One was that he's not dead and he was just went into hiding for 20 years or something. Right. Um, one that was a drugs overdose. Uh, and the one is, is Dimak, the, the vibrating hand where someone comes up to you in the street and sort of just gently taps you at a certain part of your body and that will kill you like two weeks later or something and, and it, it's even better it's when it, it's in totally in the control of the person doing it wow and, i love this and so and it was that that killed him right yeah, of course or, or ninjas oh, i'm not sure <laughs> uh but i tell you i actually do come up with a new theory in the book uh, okay don't tell us that don't tell us leave i won't that, ruin it you have to read the book leave that as the as the great mystery but you're okay. saying you're saying it's not the vibrating death touch i i you know i'm I, if I had to bet, I'd bet against that. You're controversial. Man. I know. Uh, who's, who knew we were going to fall out? Um, Matthew Polly, uh, Bruce Lee, a life. Um, the websites and Twitter and things, if people want to get in touch with you, where should they go? Um, Matthew E. Polly uh, at Twitter. And also mattpolly.com is my website Beautiful. if you want to find more about the book. Brilliant. When are you going back to the States? I'm going back uh, in two days. Okay. Well, uh, in, enjoy the, the, the weather. I, I'm, I'm going to go see the Trump diaper <laughs> balloon. <laughs> can, can, can you take Trump back with you? I mean, he's, God knows what he's... He was, I, I'm here doing advance work for Trump, didn't I? He, <laughs> he was, I mean, I, I don't really care either way. You but sure? He's out there with our queen, and he's walking in front of the queen. No one walks in front of the queen. Off with his head, <laughs> is what I say. Um, Matthew, it's so nice to meet you, brother. Thank you very much. Best of luck with the book. Um, let's play the adverts. This is the Late Night Alternative on Talk Radio. Thank you, man. Thank you, George. Oh, oh, bless you, man. Um, Talk Radio. We'll get you talking. Wanna, you out at Green Flag, we course. think the okay. AA are great. Anytime you want to come on, if you have an open awards. invitation. They'll give you unlimited call-outs when you get in a pickle. Mmm, pickle. pickle.
and they cover 100% of the UK. Very good indeed. So why do we think that is so great? Because Green Flag do all of this too. And we'll have you AA renewal quote. Green Flag, common sense to the rescue. There may be a charge for call with the same problem. Savings based on our closest equivalent UK vehicle cover for vehicles 10 years and under. T's and C's apply. The crowd is electric. There's a real air of anticipation today. And here it comes, our midfield general, the new Hyundai Tucson Go Edition SUV. Oh, and it's, and it's kind of great it's having a proper deal with chat. everything. Yeah. Packed with extra kit, including oh, sat nav with live traffic oh, updates oh, yeah. to help you stay on the ball. Plus our ever-present five-year unlimited mileage warranty yeah. to keep you match yeah, fit. Is. But football fan or not, with Hyundai, you could all make the most of our World Cup Tucson Go Edition. Discover more at Hyundai.co. Hey, so nice to meet you, man. Uh, welcome back we anytime. Thank you. Sticks. Turbo from Evo Sticks, full name on the radio, were not allowed. Okay. We can say that Sticks like Turbo is 